Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. We're going to step away from the TVs for a little bit and step into the world of children's toys. It's 2019 and the rotating trends have come back around to the 1980s yet again. And initially, I believe, sparked by the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, the cassette has become more popular and the mixtapes are starting to come back. And if you're a, a young adult or somebody that has enough money to drop a couple hundred bucks on a nicely restored Sony Walkman, so be it. But what if you got kids and your kids want to get into tapes or you want to play back tapes that you made when you were a kid for your kid? Well, you'd probably get something creepy looking like this or the Fisher Price counterpart, which uh, didn't look so weird. Anyway, this is a, uh, a play school. Uh, it's a PS465 voice changer slash cassette recorder. Runs on uh, 6 volts. And you can usually pick these up relatively cheap. I got this one for my nephew who is a youngster that wants to play tapes and record tapes. And This is probably good enough for a 5 year old so so be it. Yeah, this one I got at a thrift store for a whopping five dollars and usually what happens is they've been neglected for ages and assuming I can even get the battery compartment open you usually see something like this and so it needs to be cleaned out and that all taken care of and of course it probably needs belts and things too which we'll get into. These use a Sony transport that was very common to a lot of CFS model boom boxes in the late 80s and early 90s and they're relatively simple to service. So what we're going to do first is get the battery compartment cleaned out and see if it runs and see what it does to begin with and get a baseline for what we need to do to it. So I'm going to pry the batteries out, clean off the terminals and uh, then we'll apply six volts to it and see where it goes. So here's our lovely crusty battery compartment and there's ways that you can get this off. Most of the time baking soda and water uh, solution will get that off of there. Don't know if I want to get water inside though. So I have some uh, corrosion inhibitors here. The Keg Deoxid G100 can work as well as the D5P higher concentration of Deox if you don't want to spend 20 something dollars on that tiny little can. But either way you're just going to apply the chemical liberally and scrub and scrape and do everything to get those terminals all cleaned up so that they work correctly. And then you can work on getting a new set of batteries in it. In this case we're just going to apply 6 volts to it and see what happens. Okay, so after a brief soaking and a scrub with a uh, toothbrush, the Deox cleaned up most of the garbage. I uh, resurfaced the contacts with a little Dremel. So now we can uh, apply some power to it and see what it does. I don't think it's going to do much more than I expect. The motor's going to whir and it's not going to do much else, but we'll see. Okay, so I couldn't find any C batteries, so I cheated a little bit, and I'm going up to my regulated power supply up there at 6 volts. And right now, it's being kind of fidgety, but it is getting power, so it says that jack on the back's touchy. You can see it's rotating away in there. Pretty easy to stop though. I can just rest my finger on the capstan and it comes to a halt. So the belts are tired, but it does run. Let's see here. Some crappy Bruce Springsteen. Not very loud. But it is playing. Almost like that volume control isn't attached to anything. Also that crackle. Up oh, here we go. Main volume control. Super touchy. Alright, so we got a good baseline at least. 
It doesn't fast forward or rewind though. It does play, or it did. Ah, there we go. So that jack is just finicky on the back there. All right. And I bet if we look inside, it's probably nice and crusty. If it'll focus, come on. Yeah, it's crusty. Kind of what I thought. All right. Let's get the thing apart and see what we're up against if it's like every other Sony transport I've worked on. Uh, goodness gracious, it's just going to need belts and things. So the next step is let's get it apart. Alright, so you're going to need two screwdrivers, number two and a number one, and maybe a little prying device. Uh, all the new two, number two screwdrivers are around the perimeter. Uh, these two, in fact, no, I think it was these two. Yeah, these two were the long ones. They are much longer than the rest. And then the smaller number one screws are up top here. And then you need to be able to pry this up. And it's not going to cooperate with me. I might need two hands to do this. But you get this pried up and out. Yeah, I'm probably going to need two hands. Anyways, you separate the top. And once you do that, it allows you to separate the halves uh, of the piece here. So let me do that. Okay, so when you get the two halves apart, this is what you're going to see. Obviously, there's your speaker and your cassette door. And you're going to want the cassette door open when you try to separate the halves. Here is your standard transport. Uh, this was very common to Sony. Uh, like I said, boom boxes, late 80s, early 90s. This one's got a date code of 93, so this about works with that. Uh, anyway, um, so the points of interest, we're obviously going to have to take the transport up, which is just these three screws here. One, two, three. This comes up, and then we can get to our belts and things. And while it's up, then we can address cleaning the switches and controls, uh, which are very touchy on this machine, obviously. And uh, then we can go about seeing if it actually runs correctly. So let's go ahead and get the transport up. And I'm just setting these screws aside here so I know where they're at for later. Oops. All right, so now we've got a little lack of slack here. I may have to cut this tie. Let's do that. Okay, so when you get that little wire tie cut, you can flip it up like this. And as you can see, belt replacement is really easy here. These ones are just kind of tired. And take your capstan off first. And then your intermediate one, second. And just eyeballing these. I would say that looks like about a 5.5 or 5.7. And this looks like a 7.5 or something like that. Uh, we can get close. Let me get my little measure of belt thing. These measure belt things will get you close. They were made by the Projector Belt Recorder or Projector Recorder Belt Corporation back in the 1980s. And they're okay. They get you close. It's hard to do this single-handedly, so bear with me. I'm going to try to stretch these out so that they work. This one actually measures currently measures about 9 and I know this one's about shows about a half inch larger than it actually is, so it's currently measuring about an eight and a half, so it's really about an eight. Uh, and with stretch, call it seven point six, seven point seven. So I was close on that one. And what did I say? This one was like a five and a half. So let's measure this one real quick here. Again, this is difficult to do with just one hand. There's no room really to prop up a camera while I do this. And this one measures 
six, so about five and a half, five point four. So yeah, I was pretty spot on with that one. So let me pull those two sizes and then we'll compare. So on the left is the new 5.4 and on the old one is the stretched out one. I measured about 5.5. And as you can see, yeah, the 5.4 is a little bit snug, too snug. You only want about 5% stretch. So let's go, since it's an intermediate, let's go with an SCY 5.5 and see what that compares to. Alright, so here's the 5.5. It's a slightly thinner belt. And that one's pretty damn close. Very little stretch difference on that one. So this is the one we'll use. The reason why I'm going to use a thinner belt for the intermediate is because it lessens the wow and flutter on the machine. So uh, we'll use that for our intermediate. And that's just a matter of putting this back on here. And draping it around the pulley. Let's try to do this one-handed. And let's make sure, nope, it did not get around the smaller pulley down there. One-handed magic here, folks. Sorry about that. Okay, so we got that on there. And now let's look at the larger of the two. Alright, so on the left is an SEX 8.0. And on the right is our old belt, and we're going to stretch and meet them, and that's pretty close. That's within our 5% stretch mark. So, SCX 8.0 and SEY 5.5 are the two belts of choice for this machine. And just spinning the motor here, there's no bearing noise out of it, so that's good. And I'm going to try to fit this around the drive pulley. We'll see how successful I am one-handed. Okay, and blammo. So there's our belt. Now, if you've got decomposed belt on here, if you've got goo or garbage or something like that, very thoroughly clean it off with isopropanol or denatured alcohol. Uh, that usually cuts through the decomposed urethane. You want to do that because if you don't, it's going to contaminate your new belts and create all sorts of speed issues and stuff like that, so don't do that. Uh, now, obviously, we have to clean that volume control that's back down in that corner, and that's just deox at D5. Also, the record play slide switch down here, you want to make sure that's nice and clean. Just spray it full of contact cleaner and work it about 20 times. And then the uh, voice changer slash karaoke mode, you want to make sure that switch is clean. Once you get all those done, very likely this thing will work perfectly fine. We'll set the speed uh, once everything's back together with that little gizmotroid there. And then hopefully everything about this will be ready to use. So I'm going to go ahead and clean those pots and switches. We'll assemble them enough to where we can run it and see what the speed's like. Okay, so now that I've gotten that taken care of, one final thing to note before you put this thing back together is that this metal tab here that we're looking at has to touch the top end of the record play slide switch right here. And if you try to put it all back together, this is very thin and flimsy and it will bend. And then you won't be able to record. So make sure that this comes in contact with the top part of this switch as you're reassembling to make sure that you actually do have record capability. And let me see if I can get some light on this so you can see it going back together. And we want to make it so that that little nub in there contacts that switch and it appears as though it does although it's difficult to see from this vantage and that bright yellow thing getting in the way known as the control but uh, once you get the screws secured trigger your record latch here and press this button and watch the switch activate and this one does so we're good to go there. We're going to put this all back together now and put some power to it and check the speed. Alright, so here it is reassembled, uh, partially anyway. We're going to set the speed now if it needs to be set. And there's two ways that you can do this really. If you've got perfect pitch and you know exactly how an album's supposed to sound like, put that tape in there. And then using a very small screwdriver, something like this, uh, adjust the speed to your liking. However, if you've got test tapes in a frequency counter, that works better. So that's what we're going to do. 
And in that regard, here is the JVC VTT664 1 kHz reference level cassette. Uh, and it's a full track, so no matter what side it is, it's always going to be that way. And so we'll put that in. And then we have our crummy little gold star frequency counter. And what I'm just going to do is hook that up across the speaker terminals. And so negative goes to the negative side and positive goes to the positive side. And then we press play. And we look up here and we see that it ain't quite one kilohertz, is it? Just thinking about it. So what we do is we grab our little screwdriver again. And here is the speed adjustment pot. And we're going to adjust up. And there we go. There's our one kilohertz right there. So that's running at the right speed now. Cool. So back together it goes. Okay, okay. So it's all back together. It sounds pretty good. I gotta play more than a couple seconds of anything. And the surprisingly the little karaoke microphone works pretty well. Testing, testing. So this thing's all ready to go. It does make fresh recordings. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is just something simple. If you got kids, nephews, family, or whatever that wants to play around with this. I personally prefer the look of the Fisher-Price one because it doesn't look like a creepy robot. But otherwise, it's an okay performer. And uh, you can give the gift of cassettes to your children if that's how you see it. Anyways, thanks for watching. More stuff to come soon.